welcome. Um, I am Stina, I come from Estonia, and this uh, session is uh, titled Collaborative Neat Youth Support Service Model. Why am I standing here in front of you? Um, it might be because I am educated as a youth worker, so I was one of the first few who uh, gained a master degree in youth work management in Tallinn University in 2017. And I have also practiced youth work. So I grew from uh, being an active youngster into having my first paid youth work job as a camp leader in 2007. And from there on into a youth worker, project manager. And now for the last four years, I've been working in the Association of Estonian Open Youth Centers. So this is an umbrella uh, connecting youth centers located all over Estonia. And uh, up to date, we have approximately 160 youth centers as our members. And through different activities, projects, measures, we uh, provide them all around support. And my uh, Tasks in the association in general, or mostly, are to uh, take charge of international youth work collaborations. And this leads us to actually even a more important reason of me being here and standing in front of you. So, uh, actually what this session is about, um, and why it happens, is thanks to a successful experience of an Erasmus Plus uh, strategic partnership that we just finished um, with this set of partners. And what actually led us to even uh, think of a, a strategic partnership on international level was a nationwide program that uh, was implemented through my as association, uh, which is one of the uh, measures of youth guarantee in Estonia, providing uh, support service for neat youth through youth centers. As I already mentioned to you, I, I couldn't uh, host this session without uh, telling you about this international project uh, that we, we implemented. So here are some uh, facts and figures, really short, to tell you about community guarantee. So it's not youth guarantee, it's community guarantee. Um, and, uh, and some numbers. Some of them are small, some of them are quite uh, large. Um, so during the uh, Erasmus Plus Strategic Partnership Project uh, Community Guarantee, we uh, developed one intellectual output that I'm going to show you um, later, um, which consists of 80 pages of concentrated uh, knowledge about the uh, neat uh, topic. We involved four partner countries and four uh, partner organizations then from these countries. We uh, from the Estonia were coordinating this project, but we had partners from uh, Iceland, Portugal and Italy. And this was quite an interesting set of partners as each of us had like 2000 kilometers between uh, us. So this provided some uh, challenges, but also it provided really rich uh, experiences and a lot of diversity. We implemented five learning teaching training activities. Four of them were international study visits for youth workers. There was a study visit taking place in each of these countries lasting for a week. And we had one international uh, seminar that we hosted after the study visits in Estonia. The project altogether lasted for 19 months so you can already calculate and, and figure that it was rather a busy traveling schedule, especially for me <laughs> as the manager of this uh, project. And during the study visits, we, uh, we met and visited approximately 40 uh, different services and organizations in four different countries. So we, we got to meet them, um, greet them, uh, discuss, important topics with them and learn from them. And it was 100 youth workers uh, learning mobilities uh, taking place. Um, so yeah, you can imagine the busy flight traffic <laughs> between these four countries. And as, uh, as an addition 
few international activities. We also had, of course, some local level activities, uh, national activities, and, and uh, one of the tools to, uh, to collect more information uh, for our uh, plan was, uh, was a questionnaire that we uh, targeted to youth workers and specialists working with the target group of uh, NEET youth. And we received more than uh, 400 uh, responses to the questionnaire. So this, uh, this greatly helped us to um, build this intellectual output and the service model that you're about to see. And um, let's see then. This is uh, the intellectual output. If you're familiar with Key Action 2, then you, you know that uh, normally they have to have some kind of a tangible, uh, <coughs> real outcome. And in our case, uh, this is a publication. It's not so fascinating maybe as Escape Room, <laughs> but it is uh, full of uh, valuable uh, information. Link. And it's the web page of the Association of Estonian Open Youth Centers. And uh, on our webpage, we have a virtual uh, library consisting of, uh, of materials that could be useful for youth workers in, uh, in youth centers. Uh, you can find many other materials, many of them in, in Estonian, but also a lot in English. Uh, we upload outcomes of different uh, projects, also European publications, and then uh, the result of our own key action too is, uh, is also listed here. So if you scroll a bit lower and open this uh, bold link, then you can actually access the PDF. Um, but I will just quickly walk you, uh, walk you through the uh, publication. So you can see the uh, participating organizations here. You can see the uh, authors. And what's uh, uh, something that I would, uh, I would like to point out uh, or highlight especially is uh, starting from the uh, page nine, you can find uh, uh, conclusions about youth guarantee and youth, youth support services in the, those four partner countries. Starting from uh, page uh, 19, we have listed examples and uh, good practices from the uh, partner countries. So those are mostly the organizations that we managed to uh, see and visit during the study visits. Um, then uh, starting from page uh, 45, there are uh, discussions and conclusions on the international study visits and, uh, and the international seminar in case you want to learn more about this project process or the learning process uh, in this project. And, uh, and on 57, um, you, can, uh, you can find the conclusions of the specialist's uh, training needs. So uh, this is the specialist questionnaire that we received for 400 uh, uh, answers to. And this gives quite a good overview about the preparation and, and needs in the field. And then if we uh, scroll down to page uh, 64, then we can actually see the, uh, uh, the model itself the service model itself, 64. It's important to say that this uh, framework of uh, system thinking was there already before us. So um, it's developed by Donella Meadow and we used her um, structure of uh, system thinking and filled it with our own uh, content. And it came together like this. Um, so the service model, in our case, obviously, it's mostly focused on, uh, on services for neat youngsters. But if you work with another target group, you could still uh, 
make use of the model, uh, modify a bit, but I, I'm sure it, it would still give a bit of uh, uh, food for it both to, uh, to improve your own services or start new ones. And in the model, you will see that one service actually consists of uh, four different aspects. So first aspect that uh, each of us knows about, that each of us can recognize is the physical uh, aspect of uh, service. So this is something that, uh, that's uh, easy to see, that everyone knows about. And uh, just uh, shortly, what actually describes the physical aspect of a service um, are these, these kinds of uh, uh, keywords that young people know where to get support from, the services are accessible online, there is an efficient uh, local network operating around the services and research uh, results are timely and accessible to everyone who need them. And under the physical aspect of the service we can also uh, we can also think about uh, uh, the physical spaces that are there, like multifunctional spaces for youngsters. Of course, here it's important to talk about resources. Do you have enough resources to hire specialists? Um, or, or do you have sufficient resources and you know what to, what to even do with them? And for this, we, uh, we need to know what kind of services are and we need to uh, also be aware of, uh, of uh, research uh, results. This is just a short, uh, short intro to this aspect. You will learn more about this later on. And then, actually, in order to even uh, reach this uh, physical service, to, to start something new, to, to develop or to improve something, then uh, it all uh, starts from, uh, from the mindset. So if you scroll lower on the, on the screen, then you see mindset is the, is the most hidden aspect of the service. This is our attitudes. And, uh, and not only of our, but, but here we can uh, also map the uh, attitudes and mindset of our partners and stakeholders. So uh, under mindset we can uh, discuss about how much uh, the specialists working with need youngsters are valued or recognized, um, what's their image in, uh, in the field or in society in general. We can, uh, we can uh, map if, uh, if the actions are based on, uh, on only the interests of youth workers or, or also other stakeholders are, uh, are contributing. And uh, we can discuss how decisions are, are being made. And this also involves the young person and their own motivation to participate in the services. And then between these two, if physical is what we immediately see and recognize and mindset is what actually enables us to build a service, then between these two we have informational aspect of the service and the social aspect of the service. So on the informational aspect, it's important to, uh, to see that uh, uh, there would be all around feedback accessible that uh, the service providers and youth workers, other specialists working with young people, that they would get feedback but that al also that they would have the chance to uh, give feedback, for example, to decision makers, European Commission, to actually say what they need or to say what actually works. And then under the social aspect, of course, we can uh, we can think about everyone else who is involved in uh, improving or, or developing uh, or creating services. 
So here we can, uh, we can see that uh, ministries play a role, local municipality, education system, companies, families, young people themselves, including different groups of young people, and then meet youth. So this is the social aspect, that youth workers are not all alone in, uh, in this system providing solutions for the young people who are in need, but we can uh, collaborate with, uh, with other people who have uh, other skills, who can enable uh, more efficient and holistic services. But uh, another comment when we look at this model is that uh, even though we, uh, we traveled uh, far and wide, then actually uh, I am not sure if there is like one service or service provider now that actually could tick uh, off all these keywords. So this is a collection of different things we saw here and there, uh, just put together into one system. And if you actually manage to, uh, to bring together There is no habit of, uh, of coming together and working together on these things. And it would be difficult to build this local network, but if you actually manage, uh, maybe a bit easier on rural uh, areas uh, to start with, then, uh, then really you can build an ideal and uh, holistic uh, service. And uh, of course, this is it will always be a work in progress. I'm sure there are also uh, things missing is changing quickly and uh, young people and their needs are changing quickly so, uh, so uh, I'm sure this also would provide a lot of like uh, starting platforms for further projects and uh, discussions and analyzes. So that's just one of the uh, possibilities and if you're interested to, to think about the services that you work for or that you are providing or developing or one they may be creating then, then I, I recommend you to But yeah, besides, uh, besides this model in the uh, publication in general, there's a lot of interesting examples to read. And, and if you're into the topic of uh, meet youth and supporting them uh, in the best way possible, then, then I'm sure this could be like your nightstand uh, reading <laughs> for a while. Uh, here I will uh, wrap this session up. I hope it was uh, uh, interesting for you and that you uh, gain some new new ideas, food for thought.